I decided to get a plate full of the 70 cent sushi. Good morning from Fukuoka, Japan. I have a great day planned out. I'm going to be checking out Fukuoka Tower for panoramic views of the city. Then for lunch, I'm going to be heading to a restaurant where you can grill your own live seafood. Even though I only got four hours of sleep, I'm still energized and excited to start my day. So let's head down to breakfast. I got a large tray full of all sorts of variety of food, but I want to start off with the miso soup. Miso soup is a staple in Japanese breakfast, and I really love how they do it here. It's definitely a bit on the salty side, and it's got such a rich flavor from all the miso paste that's in there, and it definitely tastes a lot better than any of the miso soup that you get back in the States, since it has such a rich flavor here. I also got a little bit of sashimi, and it looks like it's a bit of sea green. Mm. Oh, that's quite nice. It's a really buttery, soft cut of fish. And then on top, you have a little layer of the skin, which adds a really nice chew to it. And you gotta have it just with a little bit of soy sauce, because so it really just enhances and brings out the natural flavor of the fish. They also have a lot of different salads at Japanese hotels, so I decided to get myself a little salad with some of their soy-based dressing. I know what you're thinking, this is probably just a regular salad, but it is not. You cannot sleep on a salad at Japanese hotels. The lettuce here is so crisp and fresh, it feels like it was just plucked straight from the field. And then I love the dressing as well, it's got a really nice tang and soy flavor, and I really enjoy my Japanese style dressing so much more than just like a typical vinaigrette, because they have that as well. But you definitely gotta try out this special dressing. Another important staple of any Japanese breakfast is you always got to have a piece of grilled fish. Mm. And that is a very simple piece of salt grilled mackerel. I think they do a really good job over here since it's very lightly salted. Sometimes it gets overly salted, but not here. And it's got a really nice texture as well. It's perfectly cooked. It's so nice and flaky. They also had a variety of sushi at the front. I decided to go for the conger eel, which is one of my favorite cuts. I will never say no to a good conger eel sushi. The rice is really nicely packed. Perfect balance of sugar and vinegar in there to just give it a nice enhanced flavor. And then on top, you have the buttery soft conger eel. And this one tastes quite interesting because I find that conger eel tends to be a little bit more lean than unagi, but this one actually tastes pretty nice and fatty, which I find to be quite pleasing. They also have freshly fried up pork tone katsu cutlets, which I've never seen before at a Japanese breakfast. And they came with some sort of rich sauce on the side that looks really intense and salty. It might be some sort of soy or miso based sauce. But let's give it a go. Oh, that's a really nice cut of pork tone katsu. It's a really thick and meaty cutlet, and it's just surrounded by a delicate, airy, crispy layer of the Japanese panko breadcrumbs. And that sauce definitely tastes like a miso based tonkatsu sauce. Got a really iconic, sweet, and savory tang, which is with an extra layer and dimension of the miso that's in there. This hotel also has a variety of Western options for their breakfast, so I decided to go for a cut of their bacon. And the way they make their bacon here in other Japanese hotels is it looks like it's grilled compared to having a crispy bacon. So it's more of like a rich, thick cut of pork belly. Wow, you can't underestimate the bacon here. This is probably the first time I've had a juicy grilled bacon. I mean, it's a whole nother experience. Instead of having a crisp when you bite down, you just have a rich juiciness and just delicate, soft, buttery fattiness. And you still taste 
all that smoky goodness and there's even charred grill marks on there as well. They also serve French toast with coconut cream on the side and that almost reminds me of something that I would get in Hawaii but either way I had to try it because I love anything coconut. Mm. Oh definitely yes to the French toast. I gotta get seconds on that. It's got really rich and buttery vanilla flavor and you can also really taste that they're using Japanese eggs because it's got this really iconic and rich egg yolk flavor that you really get from the nice high quality Japanese eggs. And then that coconut cream is really nice as well because it's very subtly sweet. It just has a rich heavy creaminess but also lightness almost like whipped cream and it just brings such an intense coconut flavor. For my drink I decided to try out their mandarin orange juice which I don't commonly see at hotels. Oh that is nice. It's really light and it's not overly sweet either and it's got just a little bit in depth of a little bit of bitterness and I feel like you're getting that really fragrant orange flavor from this. Finally I got a little bit of their yogurt with kiwi sauce on top and I thought that was really interesting since I've never seen kiwi sauce mixed with yogurt before at a Japanese hotel and I thought it looked pretty interesting. Their yogurt is definitely all made here. It is so light and just has a very gentle tartness. It's got this really enjoyable creaminess. And then that kiwi sauce is just basically like a house-made kiwi jam. And that's what you gotta add to your yogurt for that extra kick of sweetness. What an incredible spread of foods here that they have at the Solaria Nishi Tetsu for the breakfast buffet. I'm just gonna go ahead and load up on seconds of pretty much everything. And then I'll see you after breakfast. I just finished up at the hotel and kind of the cool thing about the hotel is it's right inside of a large shopping mall. While I was in the hotel room, I decided to add my Suica card that I had last year onto my Apple wallet. So now I have it conveniently located on my phone. Now I'm going to be heading onto the bus to check out Fukuoka Tower so I can get some panoramic views of the city since it's a wonderfully sunny day. Hi, Once on the observation deck at Fukuoka Tower, you have many beautiful views of the city and you get a 360 panoramic view around Fukuoka. Right over looking out here, you can see all of the buildings in Fukuoka. And to the right of us is the Tenjin Expressway, which is the main expressway that connects the city. Over here we can see the main part of Fukuoka City, as well as the mountains in the distance. Another thing that's nice is Fukuoka Tower is right on the coast so you get beautiful views of the ocean and beach. They also have an area where you can buy and hang up your own love locks. Then it was off to lunch to try 70 cent sushi. I just took a short taxi ride and now I'm going to be heading to lunch at a seafood restaurant where you can grill your own seafood. Here we are, Hakata Toyoichi. After waiting half an hour, I was finally able to get a table. And I think the reason this place is so popular is because they also offer very affordable sushi. It's only about 110 yen per piece of sushi, which translates to only 70 US cents at the current date of conversion. To order, you have to use a tablet, and it's a little bit tricky since everything is in Japanese, but thankfully, Google Translate was able to help me. Right here, you can see the list of all the different items I ordered for the grill, and I'm pretty sure they're all fairly small portions, so I'm just gonna go ahead and place my order. I 
I'm really impressed with the service here because one of the staff members helped us place the seafood on a grill and some of the items, including the abalone, were still alive when they brought it out since it's that fresh. I just finished grilling the seafood. It was a bit of a guess as to how long to cook them, but I think most of them are cooked through and some of them perhaps are a little bit overcooked. But I'm just gonna start off with this clam and this is the one I pulled off first since it opened up pretty wide. That clam is pretty solid. It's a little bit on the overcooked side, so I probably could have cooked it a little bit less. I figure it's probably ready by the time the shell opens about halfway, and it tastes pretty good in terms of the flavor. It's really nice and briny, and you do taste the freshness because it's not fishy at all. The wait staff came around, they were super helpful because they could see that I was struggling to remove these from the shells since they can be pretty tricky. And they came around with a special metal tool and opened these up. And now I'm gonna go for this clam, although I'm not sure if it's cooked all the way through, but it seems a bit soft still. All right, I decided to put this clam on a bit longer since it seemed like it was a bit undercooked, but now it looks perfectly cooked, so it looks really nice and juicy. Oh, that is how you know you have good seafood. That clam is so juicy and it really just tastes like an ocean, but in a good way, because you get really that natural salty brininess from all the salt water that it lives in. So there's no need to add any soy sauce because it already has its own seasoning. Now I want to go for this one, which is called a turbo shell. And this just looks like a giant sea snail. And this one was pretty difficult to remove since you had to get a little special metal tool and pull this one out of the shell since it was wedged in there. But now this looks pretty tasty. Although I do think I might have overcooked this one as well. Mm. Wow, this is really interesting. It has a very soft and livery texture. But I can definitely tell it's cooked. It almost has the texture and flavor of like a mussel. So it's got a really almost irony and almost earthy taste to it. But it's also a bit briny and salty and savory as well. And they said that you could add soy sauce. So I think I'm gonna try that next. I just gave it a little dip in some soy sauce. So let's try that. That is actually pretty good. You should add a little bit of soy sauce because it really brings out the flavor. I know this was a bit tricky to grill, but it was definitely worth it, especially for this turbo. The last one I want to try out is the abalone, and I love abalone, and it's one of my favorite shellfish to eat. Mm. Oh, the abalone is really nice. It's got a perfect, soft, delicate texture, almost like seafood tofu in a way. And it's really tender, which I'm really impressed with, since abalone can tend to get tough, especially when it's grilled. And I love how I cooked it with a little bit of soy sauce, because it really just absorbs into the meat. And apparently that's how they recommend it, because I feel like it just enhances the flavor and really benefits it a lot. The abalone was definitely tricky to cook. The first one they gave me, as I was grilling it a few minutes later, it literally exploded and the whole abalone basically jumped out of the shell and flew past me and landed on the floor. So you really gotta be careful. You only wanna grill it for about a couple of minutes before you flip it over and that's gonna help prevent it from exploding. The main reason it was so tricky to figure out is because they give you this giant sheet of instructions on how to grill all the different types of seafood and all in Japanese and Google Translate actually doesn't work too well with this. I decided to get a plate full of the 70 cent sushi and I was really curious about it. So I'm just going to start off with the salmon. So I feel like it's got to be good. And they said it's from Kyushu. Oh, the salmon is delicious here. It's really fresh and buttery. You can taste it. And I really do appreciate that they use high quality Kyushu salmon. And I'm just impressed because that does not taste like 70 cent sushi. That tastes like some high quality sushi that you get like at the morning market. Let's also try this deep red looking one. I'm pretty curious as to what fish this is. Mm. Oh, I think I like that one even more. This tastes like it's a tuna, and then they top it with fresh green onions and fresh ginger, which really adds so much aromatic flavor. As to me, sushi on its own can be pretty mild tasting, but when you add all these extra ingredients, they really level it up. I also wanted to try out this seaweed wrapped roll, because this one looks pretty interesting. Mmm. Oh, that's really nice. I really love that one because you get the wrap and the texture from the seaweed on the outside, which gives it a really good chew. And then on top, you have a whole bunch of pieces of chopped up fish, so it's really soft and easy to eat. So that is another winner right there. So I really enjoy the sesame seeds on top as well. 
There's so much more sushi to try. It's pretty much infinite, but I'll see you once I'm done. I just finished up lunch here, and it's a really nice location since it just overlooks the water. Overall, this was a super affordable meal since I was able to get all that seafood and enough sushi for three people and it only costs around $40. And despite the fact that it's really cheap, the sushi is great quality, the fish is definitely fresh, and they give you a decent amount. So I don't feel like I'm just getting all rice, I'm getting rice and a sizable portion of fish with each piece. It's actually crazy because you can never find sushi this cheap where I live back in California and it is certainly a great deal. Now I'm heading back to the taxi stand and I'm going to be going across town to get some ice cream at a really popular ice cream shop since I can't get enough of high quality Japanese ice cream. I decided to order the milk soft serve at Daimyo, and I think this looks really nice. It is a small portion, but I think it's also kind of interesting since it comes in a dark colored cone. I'm really looking forward to this because since I was in Japan last year, I'm really missing some high quality milk ice cream. So here it goes. Wow, this is ultra smooth. It is really smooth and creamy. I love the milky taste to it. However, it's still not quite as good as the Hokkaido milk ice cream. I think the thing that's missing is it just doesn't have the same level of fat content. It just doesn't taste quite as rich and quite as fatty. However, you do still get a nice milky flavor and the texture, the texture is a winner because as you taste it, it really just coats all of your taste buds in its goodness and all of its sweet milky flavor. Although this isn't quite as good as Hokkaido soft serve, you definitely gotta try out Daimyo soft cream. They have multiple locations in Japan, including in Tokyo, and I think you're really gonna love their ice cream. I mean, this is transformative. Now I'm gonna be walking over to Mitsukoshi, which is one of my favorite Japanese department store chains, and it's only about a seven minute walk away, and it's across the plaza from my hotel. After arriving at Mitsukoshi, I headed down to their basement immediately, which is full of food. They have freshly made bento boxes, high quality steak, strawberry and chocolate cookies which I bought later and are absolutely scrumptious, and finally my favorite, the luxury fruit section. These giant apples will set you back $5. How about $13 cherries? Or $40 mandarin oranges? They even have a $200 melon which I might try later on in the trip. I bought these $26 grapes which are the best grapes you'll ever try. Finally, I got these $6 Mekon oranges. I just stopped by the hotel to drop off some luxury fruits that I bought at Michikoshi, but now I'm in search for dinner, and I'm thinking about trying out another Yatai tonight. In fact, I found a place that seems pretty famous, and it's run by just one dude that manages the entire Yatai stall. I got a variety of dishes, but the first item I want to start off with is their omelet that's filled with mentaiko, which is spicy cod roe, and it's a popular food in the Fukuoka area. Let's just go for this. It's piping hot, and it's literally so juicy and full of mentaiko. Mm. Oh, this is perfectly made. The eggs are cooked through perfectly. The outside of it is just cooked and the inside is liquidy and buttery and rich. And then on top, you have all these fresh green onions. And in the middle, you have the spicy cod roe, which actually doesn't taste a whole lot like fish. It just adds a really savory, salty, spicy, umami flavor. It just goes perfectly with this omelet. 
and I mean, this is not the biggest omelet, and I could just devour this in a matter of seconds. It's so delicious. I also ordered their beef tongue, and I'm really looking forward to this one. The way he prepared it was so interesting. He basically got a mini flamethrower, and then he just grilled the whole outside of the beef tongue, so it looks really nice and charred. So I'm looking forward to this one. Mm. The beef tongue is fantastic. Beef tongue is definitely underrated meat. It's got a really rich and intense beefy flavor, almost like a sirloin steak. Then I love the outside because I can tell they torched it since it gives it a really crispy and crunchy outer shell, almost as if it's even been deep fried. And that just really brings out the flavor of the meat. And I just love the smokiness that you also get from being cooked on the grill. <laughs> Finally, I'm going to be trying out this fried rice that he made in a flaming wok. So I'm really curious to see how this is going to taste because I feel like it's going to have so much flavor from the heat and flames of the wok. Mmm. This is such a great fried rice because it's so simple. It's literally just rice, soy sauce, a little bit of meat, some green onions and egg, and red bell pepper. And it's all fried together in a flaming hot wok, which really helps mesh all the flavors together. And I can really get a little bit of crispiness, and you really do taste all that flavor from this searing hot wok, because you really get that sort of charred caramelization on all the rice. What a feast that was a Yatai Mami Chan. Not only was it a feast, but it was also a show. This is way better than any Benihana experience that you'll ever try out. This is incredible. This is something you can only do in Fukuoka. The owner literally does everything at the store from greeting customers to preparing the food, doing drinks, and, and basically just everything. He is just a master of his craft. He was also super helpful and very talkative. He was so friendly and he gave me a lot of tips for travel advice in Fukuoka. If you ever find yourself in Fukuoka, you gotta try out Yatai Mamichan for an authentic and once in a lifetime Yatai experience. Now that I made it back to the room, I wanna try out these grapes that I got when I was at Mitsukoshi. I believe these are the same grapes I got last year since it looks like they're in the same bag and I was really impressed the first time I tried these because yes, it is a hefty price tag but in my opinion, I was thinking about it and I was like, it's definitely worth it because it's something you can only try out in Japan. They really take so much care into growing the grapes and when I took them out of the bag, I feel like they were all polished one by one by hand because every single grape was like perfectly shiny and glimmered in the light. Here we go. Wow, that is just as good as I remember it last year. It's so crisp and crunchy and fresh. You definitely taste the freshness. And then the flavor is so nuanced. It really has almost a perfume-like flavor, but then it's also really sweet as well. It just tastes very complex and luxurious. If you've never tried out luxury fruit before in Japan, I think it's definitely something you have to try once. And as far as the different types of fruit go, I really enjoy the grapes because they're so small and really fun to eat. Today was such a busy day in Fukuoka and I feel exhausted because I still definitely have quite a bit of jet lag. Tomorrow I'm planning to make a day trip to Yanagawa, so that should be really exciting. Either way, it's been a long day. It's already 8.50 p.m. Usually I like to stay up a little bit later. However, since it's the very beginning of the trip, I definitely gotta get to bed soon because I gotta get some rest in since I really haven't been sleeping much. Anyways, I really hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure if you did to give it a like and also make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.